It does take us to our talk of the tape, the fate of the bull run for stocks. Let's ask Josh Brown. He's the co-founder and CEO of Ridholtz Wealth Management, a CNBC contributor, as you can clearly see here at Post 9. I'm going to ask you about Uber in a little bit because it's your biggest holding. That's all I want to talk about. I'm sure it is. But we're going to talk about the market. Was, okay. was it a big overreaction yesterday or not? I don't know. I, I think the, the reaction only makes sense when you look at it in the context of what has preceded it. We really are in rarefied air. If you look at the RSIs on some of the leading stocks that are at the vanguard of, of the rally, that really started, let's say, late October, early November, and if anything, has only accelerated here into February. When you look at stocks like uh, Super Micro Computer, which I know is an amazing company, but also sounds like something Christopher Moltisanti would have been pitching on The Sopranos, um, you look at a stock go from 200 to 800 because it's AI as if it wasn't AI, you know, 600 points ago, that kind of action, and you start seeing 87 RSIs, 91 RSIs, you never see that in a, in a middle phase of a market. You talk, when, you, when you mention RSI, just to make sure where everybody's on the same page. Relative that's strength relative, index. It's math. an indication of whether things are overbought in some respects, and 100%. that's what you're talking about. So RSI calculation, very simply, is measuring the strength of a stock, and it's doing so in a mathematical way so we don't have people licking their finger and, and looking for the wind. It's a way of calculating, okay, the stock's gone up a lot, but relative to the market, relative to itself, how egregious has the move been? A 70 RSI is what the pros would tell you. All right, things maybe need to cool off a little bit. You could remain overbought for a long time, though. It's not a great, you know, buy-sell indicator on the day you hit 70. When you hit 90, there are no sellers, or every short seller has automatically been converted into somebody who's covering. Then what? Who comes in and buys a stock at a 91 RSI? Well, you, That's what we're talking about. Well, there are a lot of those stocks in the market, no and question. I own some of them. No, no question. Look, there are those who would say, look, to your point, we were ripe. We are ripe for a, a consolidation, a pullback of some kind because of the very thing that you cite, whether it's the name you bring up or, or many uh, of the others. The question comes down to whether the goalposts move, moved yesterday in a meaningful way on what the market expectations were in terms of why we got here in the first place. Economy remains good, and yet the Fed is still going to cut this year at some point, and they're going to cut several times. It's a tense case it, story. It's a tenth of a percent, quote unquote, overheated on one monthly reading of core CPI. Like, like from my perspective, I'm sure that generate a lot of algorithmic stuff. This, these are, are rules based trades that are being done dispassionately by a computer. Those run their course. You find 10 algorithms doing one trade. There's another 10 on the other side doing the opposite trade. It washes out. I don't think that's what's important. I think the real show now is how realistic our expectations are for the AI-related earnings growth that this market needs to justify what we're seeing. And when I say market, I want to be clear. The next comments I'm going to make are specific to the NASDAQ 100. It's not that these companies aren't important to the Dow and the S&P. They are. But what happens with their share price has a much stronger reverberation in the NAS 100. I think the NAS 100 mm -hmm. is out of control. I think some of the moves that we're seeing in NASDAQ 100-like stocks, Super Micro, uh, Super Micro being an example, uh, Arista being an example. Look, I own CrowdStrike. It just tripled. Uh, what do you do? I don't know what to do with it. I don't want to sell it. I, I, I love the CEO. I love the company. I love the, the opportunity. But that's the reality. This is the kind of environment that we're in. So uh, I'm worried about the NASDAQ primarily. I'm not worried there's a crash. I'm worried that next week, a week from today, a week from today, February 21st after the close, we're going to get this Q4 from NVIDIA. I'm starting to think, like, what could they possibly say that's going to keep all the balls in the air? I'm running out of – and I'm along. I'm not like one of these bears that watched the whole thing go up and, and tried to call the top every week.